Late last night, we did some testing with a newly expertise, Jan Zizka, and I want to go over those test results because there's some really important things we can learn. So stick around in this video for some preliminary test results and who should and should not work on this new cavalry garrison. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms and I wanted to go over with you the test results from this brand new commander. Now I'm not going to pretend that the results we're going to review in this video are conclusive. We only ran each commander pairing one time and we just wanted to get a sense of how the different combinations would perform. We tried testing with Yadviga primary, with Jan primary, and we had YSS, we even tested with Nevsky and a bunch of these things. But the first thing I want to do is remind you of the skills of this commander, and that is really going to help you understand why certain combos performed the way that they did. Now, if you want to just jump ahead to the test results, there are timestamps, as is the case in pretty much every one of my videos, to navigate you to wherever you want to go. And as a quick reminder, I have over 1,700 videos dedicated to making you a better player in Rise of Kingdoms. So consider subscribing so you don't miss the latest news, commander testing results, and more as soon as that information drops. So to review his skills very briefly, he's got 2,200 damage factor. And when his army is below 50% of units remaining, he's going to do an additional 250 damage factor. But when expertise... This changes up a little bit. It all becomes 2,400 damage factor and 300 damage factor AOE when you're fewer than 50% of units remaining, and that hits three targets. So this is a commander that does have AOE, and I just want to mention that in testing, we found this to be that, like present, but not insane. Like 300 damage factor is just not enough to stop you from swarming. It might potentially change where you stand around a garrison it'll be annoying but if you're going to swarm the garrison it's simply not going to stop you the second skill gives 15 percent cavalry attack when you're garrisoned you also get 15 percent defense and 10 percent skill damage boost this is very important not only does this commander do big skill damage he also is boosting skill damage and you'll see why that's so relevant in these test results up next Troops led by this commander take 10% less normal attack damage, and there is a 10% chance to remove all normal buffs from the attacker. That happens when the garrison takes skill damage. This dispel effect can trigger once every 8 seconds, and these buffs include normal strengthening, increasing attack, defense, or health, or things like strengthening their healing effects for a short window of time. Presumably, that also includes strengthening your skill damage. That is certainly relevant. If we continue on, we've got 20% health. That's a big number, very important for a garrison, but there's more. When launching a normal attack, they have a 10% chance to gain a buff, increasing their normal attack damage dealt by 20%. This can trigger once every eight seconds. So we have here a commander that's really got some stats, a small amount of modification, a sort of enhancing of whatever commander you pair with and largely just really big skill damage. Now, with regard to our testing, everyone who was rallying or garrisoning was fully iconic, and the sets mostly look like this. There is a little bit of variation. So, for example, we did have one rally that was slightly better equipped um, with the KVK helmet talented as opposed to the set helmet. And the talents that we used, by the way, on Jan are as follows. I want to call out, and this is going to be extremely important, that we didn't even take the talents that are really good against archers. And I think you'll see that this garrison already is looking like they're going to do exceedingly well against archers, even without these very important talents. As a quick reminder of our testing methodology, we use the same number of troops in the rally and the garrison. We use full equipment because equipment is absolutely critical to simulating a real situation. There are things like the Horn of Fury as an accessory, that disproportionately benefit different commanders. As an example, XY is a commander that benefits massively from the Horn of Fury, more so than other commanders. So you gotta have equipment on to get a real check of a rally or garrison. The downside for doing that in an arc practice match is you can't switch your equipment or your talents mid-match. So what we did is we ran two practice matches, one with Yadviga primary, another with Jan primary in order to sort of compare how they might do. And there's actually a lot you can take away from this 
even though I will not pretend the results are conclusive. And this is so, so, so important to understand. People will get this wrong, even though I shout this out every single time I do a video about this. If you look at just one report, there could just be randomness influencing the outcome of that report, okay? Commanders have abilities that trigger instant proc damage and so on that make it a very wildly different result. And I just got to be really cautious in reminding you, this is just single tests with each combination. So it is not necessarily conclusive. With that said, let's get a look here. Jad YSS against XY Nevsky. Actually, the Jad got absolutely clapped here. 138,000 to 80,000 decimated. 60K differential here is huge. The reason we did YSS in this testing is to get a baseline. Okay, we, we know what Jad YSS looks like in KVK, and we're looking at it now as a baseline to compare here in ARC. So now we bring in the new commander, okay, Jad with Jan, and it does not do much better. Okay, 55,000 SEV differential here, it got freaking destroyed. So what is this telling you before you just click away and think, well, the new commander sucks. I think that cavalry, especially the XY Nevsky combo, is extremely strong against cavalry garrisons. And I think that the answer for this particular rally is actually in Flavius. So infantry have the answer, not cavalry. And you should expect that. Infantry should counter cavalry. Looking to our next rally here, we did a Pakal Herald. And against Jad YSS, it's fine. It's not amazing. 6K win for the Jad, but barely. Okay. When we swap in the new commander, it was a definitive win. Now, I will make the argument that Pakal Herald is not all that great of a rally anyways. So it's a little weird that infantry are super, super, super countered by cavalry. That's not how that's supposed to work. But here we are. It's 2022. And that's how things work in this game. I think it is likely that we will see new infantry in the future for rallying. Um, and that those new infantry will both arrive at the same time. I think we're going to get a conquering commander in the Mightiest Governor, and I think we're going to get an open field commander that will be used as a part of the rally combo. So I think we will get a new infantry rally sometime in the future. For now, Pakal Herald are definitely hard countered by Jad uh, with Jan. Now, looking to the next combo, Jad YSS against a Boudicca Henry. Here we're looking at about a... 40,000 differential in favor of the garrison. I mean, it's solid. When we swap in the new commander, we're looking still at a 40,000 differential. I mean, it's like about the same to use the new commander versus YSS. The advantage of the YSS is that theoretically, you can dump any troop type in there. I say theoretically because like Cav preferred, you know, uh, but there is a lot of advantage to YSS being able to offer lots of different troop types. Um, we ran the same uh, JAD with Jan Garrison against Boudicca Nebu. And we're looking at, again, about a 40,000 differential. So it's absolutely crushing these archers. It really is crushing the archers. And if we look now, uh, this was just sort of goofing off for the last test. We, we ran um, Jad with Jan against a Guan Skippy. And let me just say, like, don't rally with Guan. This is not a thing. Don't do this. It's never been a thing. People always try to make it a thing, and it's never been a thing. So just take it from the experience of thousands of governors who make this mistake of rallying with Guan Yu that this is not a rally, okay? Now, one thing we did at the tail end of all this, just to see, was we tried the two new commanders paired together, and we swarmed it. Now, there's no science here to how this was done, okay? I'll just say that the, you know, the swarmers did pretty well. In the grand scheme of things, they did pretty well, but there wasn't... It wasn't like we planned out an exact number of troops on both sides. We just kind of swarmed it and we said, how does this go? Does it get absolutely decimated? And I mean, I think this looks like what you might expect from any garrison. It's like fine. Uh, the, part of the reason we wanted to run this test is to see just how noteworthy it would be, just looking at it as it was happening, to see the AoE damage coming from Jan. And it, it's just not all that much. From here, we tried out the Jan primary garrison and a YSS secondary. And this was beating archers pretty well. About uh, that 40k differential that we've been seeing against pretty much every archer combo was maintained. So if you had YSS and you wanted to move in on a cav garrison, theoretically, the new commander might be a way to do that without even having Jad. Um, that Henry Nebu, again, 
great rally, but did not do well here. We ran a Henry Nebu again. This time we put in Nevsky, and this is really wacky. A 50K differential in favor of the garrison. Now, somebody stepped in the AOE, but that doesn't actually matter for the purpose of this testing because that AOE doesn't influence the outcome against this particular rally. So um, the big learning, I feel, in part, is just Nevsky is really good with the new commander, and we'll talk about that more in depth. It's the reason I went over the skills at the start. This is very important to understand. We ran Jan with YSS against Boudica Henry, and we're looking at a very small differential here. This was sort of surprising. So I felt like this garrison was maybe not quite as good against all archer combos, or it could have just been randomness, um, but we're looking at like a 10k differential in Sevs. This is actually a pretty close battle. We look at the next one, and we bring in Nevsky again, and this is a pretty solid differential of 35,000. Okay, Nevsky with the new commander seems to work, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. We look at the next report here. Um, it's another uh, Jan with Nevsky against Boudica Henry. This is because somebody grabbed one of the holy sites in the middle of the last test, so then we equaled them out again. And weirdly enough, as I said, randomness is a huge indicator of like who wins or loses here because now the trade is even more in our favor, even though the opposing side now has more stats. There's almost a 45K differential here between these two. Looking to the next report, we've got Jan with YSS against XY Nevsky. Now, this XY Nevsky was unfortunately 30% of stats less decked out than the original XY Nevsky that we were using. So I think that there's some value in seeing this, but I, I wouldn't take this the wrong way. It was missing like 16% attack and like 14% health, which is a lot of stats, even though they are both full iconic. So the thing I would take away from these XY Nevsky rallies is that Jan with YSS only did okay. It really wasn't that great. And, and contrast that to the Jan with Nevsky, and this thing was amazing uh, against the exact same rally. So... When we look at the relative strength of the two different garrison combos against the exact same rally, I think that this Nevsky is starting to look better and better. Now, if I continue on here, we used Jan with Jad, got a 35k differential in our favor against Boudica Henry. We ran Jan with YSS against Pakal Herald, and it just absolutely decimated the Pakal Herald. Um, and we ran uh, Jan with Nevsky, and it absolutely decimated Pakal Herald as well, about 50k positive. So what do we take away from all of these tests, which are not conclusive, as I said at the start, but are a pointer to how this garrison performs? I think the first thing we obviously need to talk about is the power level of Nevsky. Why is it that a non-garrison commander is arguably performing better than Jadwiga? And the answer is just very simply right over here. Not only do a lot of these skills actually work, but making it so that you have 25% more skill damage and then potentially another 35% more skill damage is just insane when you have a commander like Jan, who does huge amounts of skill damage. So I think the reason that Nevsky paired with Jan works so well is they both are enhancing skill damage and care about skill damage so much. With that said, I think this garrison is very swarmable, but I don't think it's so swarmable that like anybody, even people without technology, you know, from KVK can just swarm it and get some good trade. I think that the Nevsky with Jan garrison is something we're going to see in passes and in forts. And I think that in situations where it's prohibitively difficult to swarm, as I was describing, the Nevsky will probably work as a pairing simply because of all of that enhanced skill damage. Now, one other thing we even noticed in the live stream is that Nevsky even works really, really well when your counter rally finally arrives on the rally that's, you know, hitting your garrison, because then the rally will count as being surrounded, and Nevsky gets extra bonuses against surrounded targets. So I think Nevsky will be deceptively good when used as a garrison captain in the right situation. When we look to the role of Jadwiga moving forward, I think that the Jadwiga and the Jan garrisons are fairly comparable, but they're probably best when paired together. The two of them together, I think, will be a very strong pairing. However, the disadvantage is that you have to have full calves. And if you're battling against archers, I think that's a pretty reasonable choice. 
you would run them together, you make sure to have the talents that work well against archers, and it's super powerful. But for a more flexible garrison, pairing either Jan or Jadwiga with YSS seems to be fairly performant. I think it's going to continue to work well. So do I think that everybody needs to rush out and max Jan if they want to be a garrison captain? Not necessarily. I think he's going to be really solid if you want to absolutely decimate archers and a really great choice. If you don't have a garrison commander to pair him with, but you have Nevsky, you can move in on garrisoning. And I think there will be situations where the downside is fairly mitigated. Again, that's when you're in a pass or potentially in a fort. I think that the Jan Nevsky combo is, of course, vulnerable to being swarmed. However, just simply avoiding that situation entirely for when you garrison means you could start to move in on a cavalry garrison and be okay. That said, the downside of garrisoning and garrison uh, commanders in general is that they typically are not all that great in the open field. I don't think he's going to be amazing in the open field, although we haven't tested that yet. And also, that means you're committing one of your marches to being stuck in a garrison instead of actually being able to fight in the field. So for a lot of people, myself included, that's a pretty big downside. If I were to summarize where we're at with the meta right now for rallies and garrisons, in many ways, it feels like things are perhaps moving in the direction of being more balanced, with the exception of us not really having a competent infantry rally, and that cavalry are decimating infantry, which makes no sense. Now, on my main account, I did unlock Jan, and you may be wondering, well, Chiskul, are you going to go expertise him? And I think at this moment, I'm just going to wait and see what other people are doing, see more test results, and I don't particularly feel like I need to move in on a new garrison when I unlocked him with, like, only 10 sculptures. I think that if my kingdom wants to hook me up with more sculptures in an arranged Mightiest Governor, I will be open to it, and then instant maxing. Um, on behalf of the kingdom. I'm always game for that. But otherwise, like, I, I potentially just save my sculptures, let other people cavalry garrison, because I think the reality is that if you want to be the best of the best in a garrison or rally capacity, you have to pick the right civilization and have all the right equipment and all the other things. And for me right now, I have the best you could have in the game for infantry, which means I have to go Vikings, my Xenoflav is the most difficult Xenoflav you can run into. And so that's probably the route I need to stick with. And that's what I'll do. I am really hoping that in our next cycle, we get some infantry commanders that are really awesome for rallying. I suspect that will be the case as I described. But if you have any other thoughts, let me know down below in the comments. Again, this was only some preliminary testing, but if you want to see the live stream where we did all of this testing and you can see it in action for yourself, there are timestamps, and that video will show up over here in just a minute. Alternatively, if you want to see some other situations where my Xeno is garrisoning, then I'll have a card up over here at the end credits.